This is podcast 5.1 for chemistry. We're going to talk about writing chemical equations and chemical reactions. Then we're going to talk the law of conservation of mass and then how that applies to balancing these chemical reactions that we write. So the first thing we're going to do is review the different parts of a chemical reaction. And you can see on this picture there's three keywords that you need to know. The coefficients are the big numbers out in front here. They're the part of the chemical reaction that you add when you're balancing it. The reactants you always place to the left side of the arrow and the products always go to the right. So this is what you put into the reaction and this is what comes out. Along with this, which we don't see in this reaction that's written here, are a lot of times you'll see letters coming after each substance and they're in parentheses. What those are, they're telling you the states of matter of those substances. So what you could see is a G, which just means it's a gas. You could see an L, which means it's a liquid. An S tells you it's a solid. And the other one is AQ. And AQ means aqueous. Aqueous means it's dissolved in water. Or it's mixed with water. So for example, if I take some um, vinegar. Vinegar is actually acetic acid but the vinegar is put into water, so it's kind of diluted out with water. That makes it an aqueous solution. So anytime you have some substance in water, those are your aqueous things. That is different from a liquid. So if you have just water as a liquid, that would be a liquid that wouldn't be aqueous because water in water is still just water. So your pure substances that are just melted are liquids. If they're put in water, then it's an aqueous solution. All right, so you need to remember back to naming rules, and I'm going to go through these pretty fast, but when you do these, you need to take the time to remember, is it ionic or is it covalent or is it an acid? And those are the things you need to remember when you're trying to remember naming rules, and then you're going to write these chemical reactions. So here we go. Sodium metal. Sodium metal is just pure sodium, and sodium is Na, and since they're telling me a metal, I'm going to put an S after it. Reacts with is your plus sign. Chlorine gas. Chlorine gas is one of your diatomics. So when they say chlorine gas, they really mean Cl2. And I'm going to put the G after it to show it's a gas. Produce is your arrow. Solid sod sodium chloride. All right, this is ionic. Sodium is a plus one. Chlorine is a minus one. So it's just NaCl, and it was a solid. So this is what my chemical reaction would look like if I wrote it from the words out into formulas like this. The next one we're going to do in as, a, as an example is the production of water from hydrogen and oxygen gas. So hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, both diatomics. So when I write these, I need to remember that hydrogen gas is H2, oxygen gas is O2, are produced when water is decomposed. Okay, so I needed to read all the way through that first. Because this says when water is decomposed and they are produced, these are my products. So I'm gonna stop and write again here. It says when water is decomposed, water is H2O and it's a liquid, and it's decomposed into the hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So read carefully, make sure you pay attention, don't go too fast, don't assume things like I did. All right, so you're gonna do a lot more of those in class to practice and get back into the habit of um, naming and writing formulas and things like that. But we need to also talk about why we balance these chemical equations because we don't just write them, we have to go through and make sure that everything balances out. We do that because of the law of conservation of mass. It says if, for example, I put 10 grams of reactants in, I've got to get 10 grams of products out. So you can't lose mass and you can't create mass when you're doing these chemical reactions. So for example, what they did here to show you that is we just have methane and methane is CH4 and we're combusting it, which means we're just reacting it with oxygen and our products are carbon dioxide and water. But if you look at this and you think of this the two halves like that right through the arrow. I have one carbon on this side and I only have one carbon over here. So that's a good thing. I didn't create carbon and I didn't lose carbon. I have one of each. 
I have four different O atoms, and I have one, two, three, four O's on this side. And then I have four hydrogens around the carbon over here, and I have four hydrogens right here with the water. So all we did was we took the atoms that were the reactants and we rearranged them to make them the products. This is why we have to balance those chemical reactions after we write them. So this is the really important part of this. Atoms are only rearranged in chemical reactions. They're not created or destroyed. So we take what we have and we just rearrange it. When you're starting out by balancing these equations, sometimes you want to write out what you're doing. I like to split them in half like this when we're starting out. Start by listing the different elements. So on this side I have hydrogens and I have oxygens. And if I have that on one side, I better have it on the other. That's a good initial check to make sure you did it right. So on this side to start with, I have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Over here I have two hydrogens and I have two oxygens. So I look from side to side. My hydrogens are okay, but my oxygens aren't. I have two on this side and only one here. This is where you would put the big two out in front, that two coefficient. That will change your O's to two, but it also changes your hydrogens. Two times two is now four. So now my oxygens are okay, but now my hydrogens are messed up. So on this side, where I have the hydrogens, I need to make that 4. So I'm going to put another 2 in right there, and 2 times 2 is now 4. And my numbers now on each side balance out. So when you're starting out, you may want to do this method where you split them in half and list the different atoms underneath. If you feel pretty comfortable with this, you don't have to show me your work when you're balancing these. You can do it in your head and just write the answers down, and that's fine. Here's the next one. We have sodium solid or solid sodium going to chlorine gas giving us the sodium chloride and we already wrote this one once before. But again, I'll do this step where you split it in half. On this side I have sodiums and chlorines, so on this side I must have sodiums and chlorines. I have one sodium, two chlorines on that side, one sodium and one chlorine on this side. Well, my sodiums match up, I don't have to worry about those, but my chlorines I have two on the reactant side and only one on the product side. So I'm going to place a 2 for a coefficient out in front of the sodium chloride. You are not allowed to put coefficients in the middle of compounds. They can only go at the beginning of compounds. So my 2 there affects my sodium and my chlorine. So now I have two chlorines on both sides, but I need to go back and fix my sodiums. So I'm going to place a 2 out in front there, and that will change my sodiums to 2. So now everything is balanced out, and that's a correctly written balanced reaction. The next one I have here is carbon and oxygen, and I actually have to write the formula first and then I have to go in and balance it. So I have carbon and oxygen, oxygen being one of those diatomics, gives me carbon dioxide. Split it in half, carbons and oxygens, carbons and oxygens, one and two, one and two. So I don't have to put ones in there. They are automatically assumed to be one if there's nothing written. So this is it. I don't have to balance it. It's already balanced for me. I just needed one of everything. The next one here is potassium. Potassium is K, and it's not a diatomic, so it's just the K by itself. Silver chloride. Silver is a plus one. Chlorine is a minus one, so I just need one of each. Give me potassium as a plus one, chlorine as a minus one, so potassium chloride. And then silver. Silver is not a diatomic, so it's just silver by itself. On this side I have potassiums, silvers, and chlorines, so one of each on this side. And then I have the same thing over here, same three elements. And again, if I look, I have one of each on each side. So again, I don't have to add coefficients. It's already balanced for me once I wrote it. The next one is iron 3 sulfate. Iron 3 sulfate and sodium nitrate giving us sodium sulfate and iron 3 nitrate. Well, iron 3, that right away with the Roman numeral tells me this is ionic, so I better balance. That 3 tells me it's a plus 3. If I looked up sulfate on the back of your periodic table, it's minus 2. Sodium is a plus one, nitrate is a minus one. I'm just going to go through and do charges to make this faster as we write it out. This iron is still a plus three and nitrate's a minus one. So when I'm writing these, remember we got to get charges to balance. So this would be Fe and I need two of them. And of the sulfates, I need three. Plus sodium and nitrate balance each other out. I don't need to add any subscripts. 
Um, sodium is sulfate. I need two sodiums for every one sulfate. And then iron, three nitrate, iron, and I need three nitrates. So there's your reaction right there. Then we have to go through and balance. And what I like to do with these, it kind of speeds up the process, when you have your polyatomic ions, so your anions that are on the back of your periodic table, I like to keep them as a whole group. So I don't do sulfurs and oxygens individually, I do the sulfate as a whole group. So I have irons, I have sulfates, I have sodiums, and there are nitrates. So if I go through and look at this, I have two irons, I have three of the sulfates. I don't have 12 because sulfate is SO4, so I, I have three of those. Sodiums, I only have one, and nitrate is NO3, and I only have one of those because there's no parentheses with the number on the outside. So then I go to the other side, and I'm going to copy them in the exact order that I have on my reactant side. And I'm going to go through. On this side, my irons are one. My sulfates are one, not four. Sulfate is SO4, I only have one of those. Sodiums are two, and my nitrates are three. And it's three because of that three outside the parentheses. So now I've got to look at what I do. I usually like to try and balance the polyatomic ions first. So I have three sulfates as a reactant side, but I only have one over here on the product side. I'm going to start then by placing a 3 out in front of the sodium sulfate. 3 times 2 changes my sodiums to 6, and 3 times 1 changes my sulfates to 3. Make sure you don't go 3 times 4 because that's not what it is. So now I have 3 sulfates on each side, but my sodiums went to 6 and I still only have 1. So I'm going to place a 6 on my reactant side in front of the sodium nitrate. That changes my sodiums to 6 and also changes my nitrates to 6. So nitrates now, I have 6 as a reactant, but I only have 3 over here on the product side. So 3 times 2 will give me 6 nitrates. And it also changes my irons to 2. And if I look now, I match up completely on both sides. So my coefficient should go 1, 6, 3, 2. Remember, if nothing is written there, it's really a 1. So that's how you balance those that have polyatomic ions in them. The next one is just more practice. We have propane, C3H8, and oxygen. Oxygen is the diatomic. Gives you carbon dioxide. That is your polyatomic, not polyatomic. That's your covalent compound because there's a prefix there. So you don't look at charges. You just write what they tell you to do with the prefixes. And water. There's my reaction. And to balance these, these are called combustion reactions, and we'll get to that later on. But you always want to do the carbons and the hydrogens first, and we'll talk more about that when we do types of chemical reactions. So if I wanted to do that, though, for this one, I have three carbons on this side, and I only have one over here. So I'm going to place a three, and then I come back to my hydrogens. I have eight on this side, so I'm going to put a four there. Four times two is eight. Then you need to look at O's. So 3 times 2 is 6 O's from carbon dioxide plus another 4 O's from the water. So I have a total of 10 O's on this side, which means on my reactant side I need to think 2 times what number will make 10, and that's, of course, 5. So to balance this correctly, you should have a 1, 5, 3, and 4. Okay, sometimes you get problems where you can't kind of go back and forth and figure out what the answers are for the balancing. So I like to show you how you can use algebra. Algebra takes a little longer, but if it's a difficult problem, it's, um, it's kind of a time saver because you don't have to do the guess and check method back and forth. It just gives you the right answer every time. So what you're going to do and what you're going to start out by doing is you're going to assume that each substance is a certain letter. So I always just start at the beginning of A with the alphabet and work my way. So this whole compound is A, and I keep the plus sign, and this is B. That has to be equal to, so the arrow sign is equal to, C plus D. So all I did was label each of the substances with a letter. And you're going to write formulas for every single element that you have. So I have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. So I'm going to write three different formulas. What you do is you go through and you look for where all the specific element is that you're focusing on. So carbons, I have eight in the A group. I don't have any in the B. 
When you cross that arrow though, you have to write the equal sign. And I have one in the C, so I'm just gonna put a C there. Then I go through and I look for the hydrogens. I have 18 in the A's. I don't have any in the B's. Cross that equal sign and nothing in the C's and two in the D's. And then for the O's, there are two in the B's equals two in the C group plus one in the D group. So those are my three formulas for my three different elements. I have to solve for A, B, C, and D. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for which letter shows up pretty often, and in this case, I'm gonna go with A because it's both in the first formula and the second formula, which will allow me to find C and D, and then I can plug those in and find B. So I'm just gonna say A is equal to one. You can pick any number you want because you'll just fix it at the end. So if A is one and I plug that in, then C is eight. If A is one, then 18 equals 2d. I would divide both sides by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So I have a is 1, c is 8, d is 9. Now I need to look for b. So 2b is equal to 2 times 8 plus 9. And so 2b is equal to 16 plus 9 is 25. And I'm not going to panic because I get a fraction. They're really easy to get rid of. So I'm going to leave it as 25 halves. What you do is because your coefficients can never be a fraction, we're going to multiply everything by that bottom denominator. I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So this multiplied by 2 is 2. This becomes 25. 2 times 8 is 16, and 2 times 9 is 18. Those then are the coefficients that you plop out in front of your substances here. So I have a 2, a 25, a 16, and an 18. And if I look really quickly, I have 2 times 8 is 16 O's, and there's 16 O's on this side. 2 times 18 is 36, and then 18 times 2 is 36 on this side for my hydrogens. So everything's going to balance out, and that's the way you can use algebra to do this. Okay, so we're going to start by the same um, process that we did before. You're going to say A plus B equals C plus D, and you can have A through F, you can have A through C, it's not always just four substances you're going to have. So this works with any number of substances that you have, and you just keep adding on letters or you take letters off as you need them. So we're going to start by again writing our reactions or writing our formulas for our three different elements that we have. Iron, there is one in the A group and two in the C group. For sulfurs, there's two in the A group and one in the D group. And then for oxygens, it's gonna be 2B equals 3C plus 2D. So I'm gonna go back through then, and I need to solve for A, B, C, and D. It looks like I'd wanna use A as my starting point again, because I can see it in this one as well as this one. So I'm gonna say this time that A is equal to two. So if A is 2, then C must be 1. If A is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so D must be 4. Then I need to solve for B. So 2B equals 3 times 1 plus 2 times 4. Um, that will be 2B equals 3 plus 8, which equals 11. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And again, I got a fraction, but we're not going to panic. So it's 11 halves. That means I'm going to multiply everything by 2 that I have here in order to get rid of that denominator. So I'll have 4, 11, 2, and 8. And those are my coefficients that go here. So if you're getting stuck on the trial and error method or you can't figure it out in your head, algebra is a way that you can do these problems and get the right answer every time. Okay, that is it for writing chemical reactions and balancing them. We do a lot of practice in class, and we're going to do a lab with the Law of Conservation of Mass.